Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisum, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. In this conversation, I'd like to discuss with you the language of Kundalini. Uh, there's an actual language associated with Kundalini, uh, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, I would like to say some thank yous right off the bat. I would like to thank uh, Amelia Centara and her family in the Kingdom of Kerry for uh, donating the the, uh, the monies that allowed this program to come out to you. So uh, a big thank you to Amelia Centara. I would like to thank Glenn Ola for uh, creating and managing the website Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. So a big uh, thank you to you, Glenn. I would like to thank Eileen Laurel for her many, many assistances in, in uh, writing the books and things like that. And uh, so many thanks to, to Eileen. I'd like to thank Barbara Berry and, of course, Lasha. So with all of that out of the way, sincerely, sincerely felt, uh, I would like to uh, uh, proceed with the show a um, little bit differently than we normally do, although I do need to give out some sites for this information to come out, as you heard before. Uh, the website is Kundalini Awakening Systems, the numeral one, dot com. So Kundalini Awakening Systems one dot com. Uh, you can also go to uh, YouTube and just type in Chrisum Kundalini, K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I. And that will take you to the 270 videos we have right now. Uh, there are two uh, lists that you're more than welcome to join. One is Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com. The other is Kundalini Awakening! Exclamation point. That is on Facebook. And there's also a Kundalini Healing on Facebook and a Kundalini Healing on the Yahoo Networks. Uh, so let's just let's dig right in. Kundalini has a very specific language with people. Um, one of the first uh, levels of, of, of language that a person will experience is having an apex predator show up either in their dream life or in their waking life that has a very, very, very different uh, uh, expression and agenda than than, say, a normal apex predator would. By apex predator, I'm talking about uh, a hunter or a predator that has no, uh, nothing hunts it. So, for instance, uh, let's just use a killer whale. Nothing hunts a killer whale in the ocean that we know of. Uh, I'm sure that there are, there are creatures in the ocean that we have yet to discover. Uh, uh, last two years, they discovered uh, the uh, the 60-foot giant squid. Now, they they may indeed hunt a killer whale. Well, what hunts the 60-foot giant squid? You see, I mean, an apex predator is typically one that is at the top of its phylum that doesn't have a predator, like a bald eagle doesn't have a predator, a lion doesn't have a predator, a grizzly bear does not have a predator, um, wolves typically do not have predators except, of course, themselves. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm, when I'm discussing an apex predator. And the kundalini, because nothing, nothing of a terrestrial origin even comes close to the, to the kundalini, it is an apex energetic expression. And so to communicate with us in, in the way that, that would allow us to understand from a very primal uh, position, uh, it comes to us in apex predators such as serpents or spiders or wasps or bees or bears or lions or, or uh, mountain lions, jaguars, tigers. Uh, it'll come to us sometimes killer whales uh, or a giant shark some sort of a predator that is at the top of the list for that particular phylum. So, so this is 
one aspect of the Kundalini. Uh, many people will have the serpent experience. So you start to dream of serpents. Well, this is the Kundalini language communicating to you through that dream symbolism that the Kundalini is coming to you. Uh, you may find yourself getting chased by a, by a giant snake or a black snake or something like that. And I just want you to to reassess any previous uh, interpretation that you may have found on the web or somebody told you about this or that and allow your Kundalini to reinterpret this dream imagery. The... Uh, the dreams that uh, that come to a person within the Kundalini language are not to be interpreted as as anything other than a Kundalini interpretation. So, typically, what that means is that you won't be able to find a book online or a or a, or a book in a bookstore that 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 gives you correct Kundalini uh, interpretation of the dream state. Another another way that that uh, that it will come to you and communicate to you is through a color. Red, deep deep beautiful red, and a deep deep beautiful blue are two of the colors that will often come. Uh, sometimes a dark electric blue uh, will come as a as an orb or as a as a floating star, a brilliant light. And that may hover around you in your waking state. Okay, in your waking state, you will see these things, and and I want you to realize that it is a form of communication. Uh, the other things that that uh, will often occur is that as you see the snakes filling up your bedroom or chasing you, wanting to bite you, I'm going to suggest that you reach your hand out and let that snake bite you. It's not there to hurt you. It's there for two things. It's there to help you conquer your fear of a snake, if that's what you're having. And two, it's also there to initiate the kundalini uh, agenda upon you. If you're dreaming of snakes and the snakes wants to bite you, well, that is the divine invitation. And as we go back into our primal state, you know, when we were hunting and gathering and, you know, the the... The snake, you know, was a big deal because it would kill you. It would take you into the spirit realm. It would take you into the into the afterlife and into into your divine expression. And by by having by it chasing you, uh, that is indeed what is occurring. It is giving you the opportunity uh, to come in to the divine expression while you're still alive. Uh, you'll never, you'll never uh, hear me saying to you, "Oh, you know, let that uh, black mamba, deadly, poisonous snake bite you in real life." You'll never hear me saying that. That that experience is not so much for real life. That experience is for the dream life, for the vision life. Now, you may not, you know, in a waking vision, you may not be able to discern. Uh, whether it's a real snake or not, because it will often look exactly like a real snake. But the kundalini in you will give you the feeling, give you a level of understanding, not a full level. Often it's just a partial level of understanding so that you can stretch the wings of your courage and allow something to happen that would not normally happen. You would not normally let a snake bite you, and so... Within that context, uh, you know the Kundalini biting you. You know you may you, you your ego will have some resistance to that, and it's absolutely natural. Nothing to you know to to slap a control over. What it, what you really need to do is you just really need to understand, have the information that when a black big black snake or green snake or whatever snake is chasing you uh, in the dream life and it wants to bite you, well there you let it bite you. In, the, in real life, you do not let it bite you. Okay, so there's a big difference right there. Uh, that communication of the snakes filling up your room is basically the the introduction of, of Kundalini itself into your uh, 
a life experience, your life expression, which which is part of the dream expression as well. So I would like you to to take that in as an understanding. It is real. Uh, the deep red will often be associated with the sacred feminine or the Shakti aspect of the Kundalini. The deep blue will often uh, be represented by the sacred male or the Shiva aspect. You can also uh, relate them in a Christian context to the sacred feminine being Mary, the sacred male being Christ, the sacred father being God, uh, the Kundalini being the uh, the Holy Spirit, infusing both of them. Uh, not everybody agrees with that. You know, let me just give you that right off the bat. Not everybody agrees with that assessment, but it is closest to the truth in my experience with it. Um, so you may see uh, in your in your waking life, you may see certain levels of color that will call to you, and you'll and you'll have to take a moment and stare at it. And it's not so much that the color itself is communicating, but the kundalini is communicating with you through its language of color symbology. It's it's communicating to you that way at that time. And so when you stare at that color, you are being communicated with by the, the kundalini shakti, the sacred feminine. And the same thing with the with the, uh, the the deep dark blue, what they call a cobalt blue. Uh, if you see any of those dark uh, blue uh, glassware bottles or or uh, glasses that have that dark blue in them, that's the one I'm talking about, cobalt blue. Uh, this will be a, a message from the sacred male aspect of the kundalini. And these, these colors can go either in the waking state or in the dream state, whereas the snakes, the snake biting you will typically be in the dream state. Okay. Now, now, along the lines of that, I've had snakes come up to me since the Kundalini and, you know, curl up on my foot or things of that of that nature. Uh, but they're not biting. They're typically they just want to be next to you. So you want to you want to make that that distinction. But it, you know, if it's a viper and it's coming at you in the real life, you know, I would actually, unless your Kundalini freezes you to the spot then I would say, you know, let the viper have its way, you know. Uh, if it wants to curl up on you, well, know and trust in your kundalini. Your kundalini will not, will not. Uh, it's not there to harm you, okay. If it does come by you or something, it's there testing your courage. Do not try to touch it. Do not try to touch a venomous snake or serpent uh, in your daily waking life. Uh, in your dream life, it's a different story. But in your waking life, do not do it. And if you're having a waking vision, I still don't want you to do it. Okay. If you feel that you're in your waking life and you're just having a vision, well, then don't reach out and touch it either, uh, unless you're absolutely certain that that snake is, is a vision uh, a quality rather than a physical quality. Uh, the Kundalini will, will introduce certain levels no, I have to tell you, this is a huge subject, a huge subject uh, to talk about. Um, so I may or may not, I, I'm going to touch on things here. And uh, if there are people that want to ask questions, uh, the guest call-in number is 347-934-0026. I'd like to welcome uh, Bruno Amadori and guests 2813-2847-3017-3059 and 3088. Uh, welcome to all of you in the uh, in the chat room. Thank you for for uh, logging in and listening. Uh, and there is Halo. Halo was there too. Okay. So with regards to the to the communication, gold and silver are also colors of communication. So we're joining blue and red, gold and silver, to the colors of Kundalini communi communication. That uh, that often comes through when a person is, you know, inside of Kundalini awakening experience. Um, many of the first levels of communication will be through color or through apex predators. Uh, and even though 
the apex predators may be coming to visit you, the snakes, the the tigers, the wasps, the you know, uh, the many different levels. I in the waking state it's a very, very, very different game. In the sleeping state, it's a very, very, very different experience. And so you need to make that that separation. Now, let's let's just talk about say some of the uh some of the insects, like the wasps, the, the vespids, V-E-S-P-I-D. Uh, the vespids are very smart. They have, a, they have a racial memory, genetic memory. And, uh, you know, through the Kundalini, you can actually communicate with these animals. I mean, it is not that difficult, and they do remember, and they are smart. Uh, let's see. I'm reading what you're writing there, Bruno. <laughs> I will I will I will address that in a second here. Uh so if you have a bee, a honey bee or a wasp land on you, do not freak out. Do not freak out. If you're having kundalini, the odds are it will not sting you. It will not sting you. Okay. So understand that. Understand that and uh don't freak out when they come around you. Don't try to kill them. Because you have Kundalini, and, and Kundalini is that apex energy, uh, it doesn't mean that you get to be a predator against all of these uh, visitations that you may be having. And I know there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, they're a, died in, they, they're a warrior, you know, they're a spiritual warrior, and they want to make war and dominate and do all these things. Well, within the Kundalini uh, context, you don't get to fight with the Kundalini because you'll always lose. You'll always lose, and fighting can be seen as a form of resistance. So, you know, as we've spoken of in in some of the earlier uh, programs, surrender your resistance. Surrender your resistance. Practice ahimsa. Do harm to nothing, to no one, and no thing, and and allow yourself to be absorbed by the energy within you, by the kundalini within you. And, of course, make sure, of course, that it is the Kundalini. Make sure that, that your symptoms, you're following the symptoms, and, you know, you have at least three three or more of the symptoms before, you you know, you classify yourself as within a, a Kundalini awakening experience. Uh, let's see, Bruno, you were saying the last day that I was wearing myself that Kundalini is communicating with me in all ways possible every time. Maybe this depends on my capacity of reception and my attention to the now and the energetic aspect of my daily life. Well, yeah, uh, Bruno, uh, somebody like you who's who's inside of the of the Kundalini, uh, it's going to communicate with you every day, all the time, 24-7. There's never a time when it doesn't communicate with you. The times that you're not picking up the communication is basically, as you suggest, uh, it's, 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 you getting up to speed with the kundalini. So as you surrender more and more and more to the kundalini, the kundalini comes in and it's changing you and it's altering your uh, the the attention aspects that you have. Uh, your ability to discern communication from the kundalini will increase. It will definitely increase. And so, my friend, Bruno, I really want you to just Surrender and abandon yourself as completely as you can to the Kundalini, to the Kundalini, and let the Kundalini do whatever changes with you that it wants to do. So far, Bruno, I think you've been doing very well uh, with your surrender and with your uh, the gratitude that you show the Kundalini and the, and the way that you're placing it in your life. You're doing very well. For somebody who is having it, uh, in, you know, at, at such a young age, so so nice, nicely going, nice, nicely done, and, and continue, continue to go that way. So let's get back uh, to the uh, to the conversation here about the communication. Now you may see uh, in your in your dream or your waking vision or waking life experience. Uh, you'll be thinking about the Kundalini because, as I just mentioned to Bruno, it's communicating with you all the time. It's just that your level of attention 
is not always aware or mature enough to uh, to be able to discern what is being communicated. So this you know this is one reason why it's such a big subject. Um, some of the other early uh, methods of communication that will occur are the temperature changes. You'll feel the heat. Um, I have I have uh, people now that are just burning up with the heat. Oh my gosh, it can be so hot. It can be so hot. And some of these people have ailments. And so this heat is communicating the presence of the kundalini. And the presence of the kundalini itself is also communicating that the the malady or the ailment that the person may be having is being worked on. So it's communicating to you through its presence, through its strong presence. And the heat can be a very, very strong presence, as can the the cold, the freezing, be also a very, very strong presence. So within that context, I want you to understand that you are indeed being communicated with. You are being communicated with, and that communication is taking uh, taking place as a temperature, as a as a as uh, an expressive element of the kundalini upon your body. Temperature changes. Uh, they're a big deal. They're a big deal. They can make or break your day, as some of you who are having this understand. But you also have to understand that this is a communication to you, and within that communication, certain elements of the transformation are being given to you, especially those of you who are who have, have had some time within the Kundalini and who have uh, you know, gone through, say, some of the first areas of the Kundalini. And so uh, you need to understand that you're being communicated with through this phenomenon, through that aspect of the phenomenon. Uh, and phenomena will be used at points of communication. The Kriya phenomena, as I discussed in a terrible early on conversation we've had here, I'll probably have to do another another one on Kriyas because it was just yeah, it didn't work out so well. I apologize on behalf of uh, Block Talk Radio and, and uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems here. Uh, we'll do another show sometime on, on the Kriya phenomena. But the Kriya, the automatic spontaneous movements and vocalizations and positions that the Kriya phenomena will put you in is also a level of communication. And one of the one of, one of the clearest levels of communication will come within the Kriya phenomena. So as the Kundalini puts you into a, a position that reminds you of a yoga uh, position, and then you try to move out of it before the Kundalini is done, you will receive a very, very clear communication about how the Kundalini uh, enjoys you trying to move out of that Kriya position or not. And I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Kundalini is not shy about communicating with you. It's just its communications will come to you in a very different way than what you're used to receiving. Not typically in words. You will not typically uh, have the Kundalini delineating to you through words, either the spoken words or seeing words written on a on a movie screen in your mind, you'll not typically have that occur. Now, I'm certainly not going to say that it will never occur. What I am saying is that it won't typically occur. Uh, to, to speak in levels of absolutism with the Kundalini is typically not productive because there are so many things that the Kundalini can do uh, that that uh, that go beyond... Uh, what we would expect it to be able to do, okay, what our ego and our and our mind would expect it to be able to do. And so often the communication will come in a way that is without words. Most often it is a vision or a visual. Uh, so uh, one day myself and another student, we were walking across the Golden Gate Bridge and... Uh, uh, the student asked me, a young man, he asked me, he said, well, uh, how come the, the, why is the Shakti the sacred feminine and, and why doesn't she just show up to me when I, when I ask her to show up? 
And I said, well, have you asked her to show up while we're here on the bridge? And he said, no. And I said, well, go ahead and ask her to show up. And as soon as he did, out jumped a young lady of about 14 or 15, and she started doing a Shakti dance right in front of us. Both both of us were amazed. She didn't know us. We didn't know her. She hadn't heard us. It, it was almost like she was just dancing for the video camera that her friends were showing her. But she was wearing clothing of a very uh, sacred feminine type of uh, expression. Uh, she was, and she was just dancing around the way, the way that you could see that the Shakti Kundalini, who often comes. In the in, in the image of a young woman of about fourteen or fifteen years old, wearing purple clothing, which this woman was wearing, and uh, and dancing around. This is called the head dancer. This is what you feel on top of your head often. Uh, it's just like a little a little tiny dancer on top of your head. Uh, another another form of communication by the Kundalini. So it can happen in your absolute waking life. And it can happen immediately. It's not to say that every time you ask for the kundalini to show itself that it will. It may be showing itself, but you may not be at the place where you can understand that it is showing itself. And so, you know, you have to you have to allow the transformation to continue to to change your your senses, to change your ability to discern. Uh, many of these communications come in the form of, of a repetition of numbers, like three, 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 or one, 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 or one, 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 or you know, things of that level. Or you'll find certain coincidences occurring in your life that go beyond chance, and that's another way that the Kundalini will be be communicating with you. You may hear the millions of insects or the sounds of frogs or crickets inside your home. That's another method of communication that the Kundalini gives to you in order to let you as a consciousness know that you indeed are having Kundalini experiences. It's a way of encouraging your discernment. It's a way of teaching you the new language that the Kundalini has to offer that the kundalini will communicate with you in. And so some of these other uh, images that you may experience, uh, aside from the, the dancing Shakti uh, child, uh, will be, a, say, a black dog with red eyes wanting to bite you. Well, black is the color of the soil. It's the color of the soil that we plant our seeds in. Red is the color of the first chakra that has to do with survival, that has to do with germination. Red is also the color of the sacred feminine. And so you have basically two symbols in one of the sacred feminine wanting to initiate you into the kundalini, a black dog with red eyes. Okay? For most people, this would elicit a level of fear. Oh, my gosh, I was chased by a black dog with red eyes in my dream last night, where in reality, the black dog with red eyes was the Shakti Kundalini, uh, giving you a lesson in courage and not judgmentalism. Just because you've been programmed and conditioned by the society you live in to believe that a black dog with red eyes is a bad or evil thing, uh, it isn't. It isn't. Just like the black dark of the soil is not evil. Neither is the is the, the beauty of the sun as it shines upon the soil people. You're going to want to reach past uh, that which has programmed you in your society. And, and this especially pertains to the serpents. The serpents are not of the of Satan or of the devil. This is just absolutely not true at all. That that was given by early Christian Christianity as a way to scare people into compliance. Okay, uh, what the serpent actually means is the human spine uh, reaching reaching for the tree of knowledge, which is what the Kundalini is. That tree, 
uh, as you have kundalini, you're climbing the tree of knowledge, the tree of life, and you're learning certain things, and your body's being changed. It's a kundalini awakening is what the tree of life is. And eating the apple of the tree of life is, is you know, you look at the apple, you look at the first chakra, once again, you have a kundalini commu- communication. Okay. It's a red apple that Eve is eating. Eve, sacred feminine, is eating the apple, meaning that uh, the, the divine knowledge is coming forward into Eve, and she is giving you this divine knowledge through her, uh, through her uh, Kundalini awakening experience, which is teaching you to eat of that red apple or eat of that first chakra, eat of the fruit of the divinity which rests at the base of your spine. Okay, so, uh, you know, enough enough of the, of the religious uh, comparisons. Although, if you are practicing a certain religion, the Kundalini can come into your life uh, as a religious figure and begin to teach you from the position of that religious figure. So what you're, what you're perhaps discovering is that the, the language of Kundalini isn't one certain way. The language of Kundalini has many, many different levels within itself as in language. You have symbolism. You have color. You have apex predators. You have... Uh, uh, Dancing figures. You have you have all of these coming at you in your waking, or your or your vision, or your sleeping experience. Okay, uh, you're hearing audio, audio type of uh, communication such as frequencies. You'll hear frequencies in your ear, frequencies that can dominate your hearing. All of a sudden, it feels like somebody's cupped their hand over your ear and you're hearing a, a, a communication. Well, inside of a Kundalini awakening, that is a Kundalini communication. You may not understand it because it's only coming to you as as lines of frequency or sounds frequent of frequency. But it doesn't matter. A certain part of you is understanding that. And as you continue to grow within your Kundalini awakening experience, uh, your discernment will sharpen and sharpen and sharpen, and you'll begin to understand what is being given to you. Okay. So Kundalini has many, many different levels of communications. You have the animals, which takes us into the uh, shamanic realm. You have the, the religious teachings, which, you know, where the Kundalini adapts itself to your religious teachings and teaches you through those religious uh, words, such as the Bible or the or the uh, Bhagavad Gita or any of the uh, the holy books. Uh, you also have color, which is also primal. You know, red for the sacred feminine, blue for the sacred male, uh, and and so. You know, you have a lot of different types of communication coming at you, but because you have Kundalini, it's all going to be about the Kundalini in you. Kundalini takes priority over almost everything else in your life. Now, it doesn't take priority over your kids. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't want you to abandon your kids. It doesn't want you to abandon your family or your job or anything like that, but it does take a precedence in your life. It understands that you have a family, you have children, you have, you have a spouse, you have a job. It understands that. It's, it's not a stupid energy. It's not like electricity. Not that electricity is stupid, but we uh, in the Western world, we don't, we don't allocate intelligence to electric, to electricity itself, although we should. Uh, and therefore, you know, when it comes to to see intelligence in energies or or energetic intelligence, we have a hard time with that. You know, we we want our intelligent beings to have two eyes, a nose, two legs, two arms, you know. It needs to be like a human or like an animal or something like that so that we can we can we can uh it can come to us easier. Well, I'm, I'm suggesting that Kundalini doesn't really care about coming to us and easy to discern patterns of intelligence. It is smart. 
it is intelligent, and it knows you better than you know yourself. And so you can you can talk with it. You can communicate with it just the way I'm communicating with you right now. Okay. So it is open to your communication, but it may not answer you in the way that you expect. Uh, forgive the phone. Uh, it may not answer you in a way that allows you to have a full-on conversation. Another student uh, would see a pair of lips. She would see lips that would just kind of appear out of the blue, and she could see the lips, and and she could ask the lip a, the lips a question, and the lips would smile, or the lips would frown, kind of a yes/no type of scenario. And uh, a pair of beautiful, bright red lips. Okay. Now, just because something comes to you in a color doesn't mean that that you want to absolutely ascertain that it is of a kundalini origin. Entities understand about the whole color thing, and they will try to mimic uh, a, communi- a kundalini communication with you. Just just make sure that you pay attention to what is being asked of you okay, or suggested to you. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, uh, the call-in number is 347-934-0026. And hello to you, Rosemary. I see that you're listening. Um, within the, the the communicative matrix of the Kundalini, certain lessons are, are going to be given. Hello, Fashti. Good to see you. Uh, some of these lessons will involve uh, correct moral expression within within the level of permission uh, that you have been given uh, to do a certain thing or to react a certain way always look look to the highest moral expression that you can uh, with regards to your kundalini uh, interactions so it will teach you to be more forgiving and so as you as you're being more forgiving well then a certain color may come to you, a certain level of light may be exposed to you. And this is, once again, the kundalini coming to you and giving you an affirmation uh, through kundalini-based phenomena. So through the many options and choices of phenomena that a person has to experience the kundalini with, uh, the communication will come in patterns, sometimes uh, uh, a whole suite of phenomena all at the same time, but given within a certain time context, uh, given when you think a certain thought or when you make a certain action, and these things can begin to develop a level of bliss in the person. You'll feel the bliss growing in your chest, and, and you'll have to just stop and cry for a little while or just stop and heave and let it pass. And that is also a communication to you that you indeed, you did the right thing. You did the right thing when when the Kundalini calls me to do a healing or to be in a certain place at a certain time. Uh, typically, it'll it, it, for me, it, it, it hits me in the heart. And my heart feels like it's being pulled. And uh, I basically follow uh, what that instruction is for me. And, 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 you know, after a while, you learn how to discern these things. But I really want you to focus on reaching outside of the box of your programming. Okay, Kundalini will communicate with you uh, through animals, through plants, through words, through colors, through symbols. Okay, uh, it, goes, it goes basically from the natural environment to the supernatural environment uh, with, with its... Uh, uh, with its spectrum of communication options. Uh, supernatural includes divinity. Okay. You may see that angel. You may see that Christ. You may see that Krishna. Okay, Or you may see uh, any one of a, of a, of a whole, uh, I mean, millions and millions of, of high spiritual uh, symbols or people uh, may come to you and give you a teaching. Okay. These things will come to you often as a waking vision or as a dream vision. 
in the waking life, you'll hear the chirps, you'll hear the uh, the frequencies, you'll see the colors, and you'll see the different ways that the Kundalini interacts with you in a waking life existence. And that includes the temperature fluctuations. So as the temperatures are fluctuating, you're being really, really hot, or you're getting really, really, really cold, or you're getting both at the same time, which is really difficult to describe. Uh, this is communication. This is communication without the spoken or the written word. Okay. Communication without the spoken or the written word. It's also communication through levels of uh, pointing you in the right direction of an activity. So if you're really, really depressed, and you're really having a hard time, uh, you know, with the kundalini and with this and that, and, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, you get the idea that, oh my gosh, I need to volunteer my time for the benefit of others. Well, that's the communication the communication from the kundalini telling you what you need to do to get out of that depression. Another another uh, communication would be uh, you're sleeping on the bed and all of a sudden you kind of hear the door open but you don't wake up completely. And you feel the bed go down as a, as a large animal snuggles up next to you in your bed and uh, you intuitively know that it's a giant tiger and you feel the pressure of its body against you. You you hear the purr that it has. You feel the flicking of its tail as it flicks its tail over your legs. You're having a kundalini waking vision sort of within the dream state. Okay, that's the Kundalini communicating her presence to you. And a tiger is often used with the Kundalini as a, as a symbol of its presence. It's used almost as much as the serpent. Uh, so, so just know that and, and begin to accept these new levels of communication. You may see the eye of Horus or a, or a disembodied eye looking at you. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. It's all right. It's just another way of the Kundalini forcing you to stretch beyond what you can, what you understand the true nature of reality to be. You know, when you're when you're at a stoplight in your car and your engine's running and you're waiting for the the light to change and all of a sudden a disembodied blue eye begins to look at you from right in front of you. Well, that can be a bit disturbing definitely a bit disturbing, but as you know that you have kundalini and that you know that you're going to have supernatural phenomena, you can accept the communication for what it is. And in this case, this would be the kundalini uh, beginning to merge itself and the divine reality with itself in the physical reality. And you are itself within the physical reality. You're, you're that part of the blend. And so you will receive, you know, often you'll receive communications that way. Another way uh, that you're communicating is, is Kundalini will step completely outside of its normal, quote-unquote, classical expressive uh, experience with a person. And it will do something that is strange beyond compare, like, like it'll give you electrical creatives. Electrical creatives are really really strong uh, electricity type energetic infusions that happen to a person often at the base of their spine going up to the mid spine they're so powerful they're enough to throw you across the room um, for a long time you may question well why the heck am I getting that I mean how come Joe Jones over there who's also having kundalini how come he's not having these things well, those kriyas are, are a very special gift that most people don't understand. And and uh, for those that are having them and been having them for up to two, maybe three years, it's not so much a kriya, even though it forces you into a kriya, 
it's 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 an energetic explosion for the kundalini footprint that you are that is being created through you. Okay. These these electrical creas are like infusions of high levels of energy within the energetic footprint that that is being created through your presence on this world as as an awakening to kundalini individual. And so for for those of you that are having electrical kriyas, uh keep your thoughts as pure as you can. Give yourself into a loving, introspective serenity uh, as you can, as you're allowed to. Still go to work, drive your car, do all those things. But when you feel those electrical kriyas come on, adopt a certain position of, of mind towards love, towards unity, towards happiness, joy, and bliss. And let those, let those qualities be infused into that that mile wide energetic footprint that you're having. And if you have any questions about that, please feel free to call in three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Let's see. Uh, short while before she goes out. Okay, all right. Um, so as we continue with this, the Kundalini will communicate with you through the animal kingdom, as I've discussed earlier. Uh, birds may land on you. Butterflies may land on you. Wasps or bees may land on you, but they won't hurt you. Uh, it's a way of signaling to the Kundalini awakening person that they now have a different relationship with the natural environment. And the natural environment is having a different relationship with them. Uh, No longer are you seen as a predator or something to be avoided. On the contrary, you are something that attracts them to you. And this itself has a whole level of teaching that, that kind of place you in the middle in, on the bridge, what some people call the Rainbow Bridge or the the Antikarana. Uh, as you have the Kundalini and you're being changed by it, the natural environment knows this and is seeing this and is giving you um, validation by changing its method of communication with you, by changing its level of shyness with you, by changing its level of interaction with you, uh, you are seen as someone who is going into divinity. And within that matrix, uh, the animal kingdom understands, because it is of a divine nature as well, it understands that it has no need to fear you. No need to fear you. Even if the kundalini has you eat meat, the animals will still see no danger in you, although within the uh, programming of of Western society, they will probably still run from you. Okay. But not all of them. Like, I've had the birds land on, I've fed wild animals, you know, the snakes and whatnot. Uh, You are seen in an exalted format by by the creatures of the of the field and stream, and and so realize that, and realize that is another form of communication, a form of communicated trust, trust in the divinity that is changing, trust in the in the fruition and the nurturing of the divine transformation within you. The animals trust it probably more than you trust it yourself. And then that goes with the little babies and the people that we would consider to be autistic. You know, they can see the crown that is developing over the top of your head. They can see that, just like the animals can see that. And so, once again, now, this is a vision that is being given to others from the kundalini that is awakening within you. And so, once again, this is a level of communication, a level of language that is being uh, passed and developed uh, within you for others. Let's see. Looks like we have some. Ah, Celestial Rubies. Hello there. Hello. Good to see you. 
Uh, so with the Kundalini, there are levels of communication that go far beyond uh, what we would consider possible. You can communicate with a virus. You can communicate with specialized cells within your body. You can communicate with spiritual uh, creation, spiritual creation which is so amazingly diverse. I cannot tell you, I cannot list for you the, the diversity of life and creation that exists beyond the five senses, okay. which is why I keep telling you that it's a big aquarium out there, because it really is. Uh, but the Kundalini is teaching you about this, teaching you how to discern appropriate from inappropriate, how to discern that you will indeed be the... the uh, you will experience the what's up, the results of your choices. You will discern the results of your choices. And you'll be the recipient of those results as well. So be very, very uh, cogent of that. Be, be understanding because that is also part of the Kundalini language. Is taking responsibility for what you do and how you do what you do. Remember, kundalini is not so much a condition as it is a condition brought upon by a divine intellect, that which rests at the base of your spine and the last three vertebrae extending down to the to the to your feet, to the the sole of your feet, of your foot. Another form of, of uh, communication or the language of the kundalini, as I mentioned before, comes from the phenomena. So when your black left toenail turns, big left toenail uh, turns turns black, you know, when that occurs, then you know that you're being communicated with. Of course, the kriyas are an obvious communication. Uh, the interaction with, uh, shall we say, spiritual creation increases. So you may have the knocking on the wall or the or the uh, calling of your name in an empty room, things of that nature. Uh, but those are not typically prolonged. And if they are, then uh, you need to discern, number one, that it is indeed coming from a, a trustworthy source, not an entity, number one. And then number two, uh, you need to be able to follow that guidance, even when it goes against what you feel is, is uh, is your best interests, but only, only, only if you have ascertained that it is Kundalini doing this, not an entity that is covering itself or pretending to be Kundalini. Uh, you know, never, never do that for an entity. Never let an entity control you to such a degree. Another way of uh, of Kundalini communicating through its own form of, of uh, multi-tiered language uh, will be through your diet, uh, what you're allowed to eat, what you're not allowed to eat, uh, whether or not you're allowed to partake of some of the normal human uh, biological functions. Uh, the libido may disappear. So you don't get to have a libido for a certain amount of time. That's a communication. That it's using that energy from that part of your energetic anatomy to further its transformation of you. And it's not going to ask your permission. It's just going to take it. And your job is to surrender to that. Let that be for the time being. And for guys, this can be very, very disconcerting. All of a sudden, you're not able to do what you've been doing for a number of years now, and, and I want you to just relax with it, let it go, let it do what it needs to do, and then eventually your libido will return. So you have been communicated with through, through deprivation of a certain uh, elemental function, uh, natural, you know, uh, basic biological function. This has been taken away from you. And the same thing can happen with your sleep periods. 
the Kundalini may remove your ability to sleep for eight hours or six hours or however long you sleep. Uh, and then it may also just turn right around and increase it. You know, you go from eight hours to needing 10 or 12. Okay. So these are all forms of the language of Kundalini that you feel and you discern through those feelings. They will not often be given to you in spoken words. Sometimes they will. But most often not. And most often they will go against the laws of physics. Okay? Fish aren't supposed to want to swim up to you and, and have you gently stroke their fins. They're supposed to run away from you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. But with Kundalini that happens. Birds don't typically land on you and want to be fed breadcrumbs or tortilla crumbs in my case. Uh, but they do with the Kundalini. Okay? There are so many levels of communication that can occur through the Kundalini that I have a hard time sticking to one area. What's happening is my Kundalini is bouncing me off to certain areas that that uh, may be of interest for you. Uh Sometimes certain levels of telepathy, which is one of the first things that a person is given of an exalted uh, nature, uh, only certain types of thoughts will you be able to pick up. Once again, that is a communication that the Kundalini is in charge of your sacred gift. Not you, the ego. Kundalini says, well, okay, you're only going to get to read loving, wonderful, beautiful thoughts. That's all you get to see. From that point until it changes that expression, your telepathic experiences will only be of a kind, loving, beautiful thought area. And then conversely, it will change and only the most evil, horrible, despicable thoughts will be able to be read. And that's, once again, another communication. And, and when you add the two communications together, what you're being given is a, is a, is a wide uh, area of experience with the Kundalini, a teaching about human nature and the, and the nature of, 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 you know, despicable thoughts versus loving thoughts. Okay. You're being given a huge teaching about the different polarities of human expression. And not a word has transpired between you and the Kundalini, but through the exalted phenomena, you are able to be tested in certain ways and educated in certain ways. Uh, most of the education will come uh, in your dream life. So let's just look at the dream life for the moment. Uh, it will take situations from your day and orchestrate them in a way that allows you to see a Kundalini teaching emerge. Okay. If the, if the Kundalini, let's just say you have a, a new bicycle or you're wanting to buy a new bicycle, but you haven't done it yet, but you want to buy this new bicycle, well, that night you have a dream. And in the dream, you see this new bicycle that you want to buy all crumpled up in the bottom of a ravine. And you wake up with that on your mind. You go, well, jeez, what what is what is the information behind that dream about that bike? Well, maybe the Kundalini is telling you don't buy the bike, don't ride that bike, and don't don't even go there. Giving it to you as a warning doesn't mean that it's going to stop you from buying the bike, but it's giving you an education that, that it may not be the best form of recreation for you at this time. Maybe it's that particular bike that it, that has a malfunction or isn't made in a certain way. Or maybe, you know, uh, if you had followed that timeline, you would have picked up the bike and had a perfect opportunity to have an accident with a car or something like that. And so the Kundalini is telling its child, well, don't, you know, that's not the best choice to make at this time, but if you want to make it, go ahead. Okay, that's the kind of communication. Sometimes it won't let you have a choice. Sometimes it takes your choice away, uh, and this is okay as well. This is, as a matter of fact, it's even clearer when the kundalini takes the choice away from you so that you know that, 
that, wow, okay, under no uncertain terms, you know, I'm not to do this or partake of that. Okay. Uh, so, you know, those levels of, of communication will be happening quite a bit. Uh, also, during the dream state, uh, you may have members of your family or your teacher, you know, if you have a kundalini teacher, often the, the teacher will come to you vis-a-vis the kundalini into your dream and start giving you instructions in the dream state. This is common. This happens with me a lot as a teacher. You know, I get put into a lot of a lot of dream uh, areas. Uh, with that, with that in mind, uh, it will often take things from your work day or your family day, or things that are bothering you in an emotional level and begin to teach you in the dream state about those emotional levels. And so, with with the dream state being such a fruitful area for kundalini education and communication, I will once again suggest all of you to have a dream journal, especially those inside of the kundalini awakening. You need to have a dream journal so you can remember what the kundalini is teaching you. Going back and forth across the across the veil during sleep, you know, as you come into the veil, the veil, which is the awake area, the veil has a way of stripping away your memory. So you need to really write it down as soon as you wake up. You write that down so that you're able to stay connected to the language uh, 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 and the education that the Kundalini is teaching you in the dream life. And as you practice writing down these dreams, you'll get better and better and better at it, and you'll get more and more and more out of your kundalini awakening experience. Okay. Uh, another vector of communication uh, is it's how other people treat you. Because you have kundalini, you're different now. You're, you're different in a way, and, and you'll just find people want to touch you more. Once again, that is part of the kundalini language. Whereas before, they may have tried to stay as far away from you as possible. Now, they can't get close enough. It's the kundalini, and it's the kundalini communicating to you through their actions that you are in a different position now. You are a different person now. You are not the person that you've always thought you you have been. You're being changed. And these people are validating that change by wanting to touch you or to come close to you. Uh, If you have any questions about this, uh, the number is... Oh, we have a question. Hi, Susan. Okay. I I wanted to share with you that... um, Oh, God, what you're saying, and when I looked in the computer, the encyclopedia, uh, I kind of fit a lot of what you're saying... Um, I'll just I'll just say that before I had a spiritual experience or I knew I had any gifts, I was involved with a spiritual energy vampire. Oh yes, lucky you. <laughs> oh yes, in many ways. And it started out, but I also um it's like I'm writing something. I like it's like you have an open book, blank pages and then you start to write. But before that I was mar- I was married to a sociopath. So I already was gaslighted. So my mind was already uh, my body and mind could separate easily. Maybe because of that gift um things things worked out a certain way. So I met this person who taught me on the telephone to quiet my mind. Then I went to visualizations. I kept them falling asleep by the tone of his voice. And, you know, it it took a long time for the process to happen. And then one night, he was going through the chakras with me, and I had a very strange sensation. And um, I was never the same afterwards. Um, I had visions that he put, you know, I didn't know what happened when I was sleeping. This is all on the, on you know, he was at his house, I was at my house, of things that, of him being in a dream. And when I woke up, I made these things occur. So it was like my manifestations were coming true. He was, it can, you know, all these things were happening. But another weird thing happened with this kukulini was, okay, orgasm. Okay, does that does that run true? 
to some people? Any part of your oh, body? Absolutely. Your tip of your finger to any place. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So I kept you can have that it on with your me. Nose. You can have it. You can have it on your earlobe. You can have it anywhere. Yeah, and I learned walking meditation, but I was in a state of mind, I, and then I became a zombie. But the thing was I remembered in public, I kept wanting to touch his clothing. And when I touched him, um, he there was nothing there, so he taught me soul hugging. But people were coming towards me and just sharing their stories with me, and I went to the Sagabi Center. He, he, uh-huh. he, was, he, was, he was the vampire, yes. Yes, he was a vampire. He was feeding off of me. Eventually, I came to his home. But the thing was, when I went to the center, the spiritual center, that's when they mentioned this word. And when I and she and she told me what she went through. And when I explained what I went through, she says, "Oh my God, you experienced this because you go through a madness in your mind. You have all these emotions going on and sensations, and a zombie, and you just don't know." You can't control your body in some ways. And I also learned how to project my mind. For, this is also a, for survival. So I, it's just, it, you know, what you're saying and all of these things, I think I experienced it, if you're saying that you could feel all these things. Well, yeah, sure, sure. And and, and the fact that you had a, a psychic vampire also kind of adds into that whole, uh, that whole equation uh, in order for you. For him to draw energy from you, well, he had to have a way of of awakening certain levels of energy within you. And, oh, and, he grew me. What they said. Well, actually, uh, in a way, that was probably a because Kundalini doesn't happen accidentally to people. Okay, so you don't get an accidental activation of Kundalini on the outside. It oh. may absolutely look accidental. Like oh my gosh, I ran into that tree. Well yeah okay I can understand that. And, and then another person will say, well I had the psychic uh, uh, vampire you know try to try to leech uh, off my energy. But in order to have enough energy to leech off of, uh, more energy had to be pulled up and awakened within me. And so that may have been the way your kundalini was destined to awaken within you. Oh. So, I see. Yeah. And then it was sexual, because, because and then the he was scenario, feeding off of me. Uh huh. Well, so, so here's the thing. You know, the, mm-hmm. the scenario is he feeds off of you, and yet because Kundalini is a conscious force, it goes, well, okay, fine. You know, here's here's this level of karma that she's balancing right here, right now. Okay, fine. But mm-hmm. we're not going to let this. This is only going to last a certain amount of time. She's going to be awakened through information, through knowledge at this healing center, and uh, probably going to put a stop to that vampirism. I heard his voice all over, wherever I was, too, and that was so strange. And then I asked him, he says, oh, I was there a couple years before. So it was like, I I cannot explain this thing that came over me. Uh, but the visions, uh, well, and then I, I was in a car accident later, and my body changed, my eyes changed. In you know, I, I have this. I'm a being that my uh, body changes in certain circumstances. And after this relationship, uh, I was malnutrition. But after this relationship, I also had a vision for four days. Then I was in a car accident, and then my body changed. It gained weight. Um, I thought I was malnutrition, but I haven't been the same since in minor body. Well, how long? Uh, how long ago? It's did been a couple years th- since I was involved with this person. I'm not with him anymore. When his mask came off, uh, it was gone. But the orgasms, I still have it. I kept it, <laughs> and the visualization <laughs> well, and my manifestations, so, I keep that so too. So the scenario, the scenario <laughs> now, Susan, is that you have these, you have these gifts, uh-huh. and, and now, now you just begin to look into the Kundalini and to to accept the grace of the Kundalini. There's no more of a connection to him. So you have no worries as far as that goes. You just go into your own divine nature. You go into that which had to be awakened the way it was awakened. You know, you you are not clear, and and don't believe anybody that says, oh, Susan, I see in your past life, yeah, this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. I'm not clear about it. I'm dehydrated, too. That also came of it, so... Well, mm-hmm. the dehydration is in your hands to control. Mm-hmm. With water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you stop drinking caffeine, if you stop eating uh, high fructose corn syrups, if you are, 
mm-hmm. and and you, you know the highly processed white flours. If you start eating uh, organic food and and drinking uh, you know coconut milk and and eating watermelon, well then your hydration issues will subside. Oh, watermelon! Thank you. I have to drink you caffeine. Have watermelon every day. You should have that every day in the morning, and no mm. caffeine. No caffeine mm. at all. And but I do you think this reason in life was? I had a dream before this happened, and I dreamt about this fairy and this elf that came to me, and she was attracted. I was attracted to, but see, before this even took place. Someone gave me a tape, and in it it says you'll be walking around the corner, and someone will say love and light, so show you the light. And when I was walking around the corner at this charity event, when I was attracted to this guy's glasses, which I knew he was trying to get people at that time, I know now, that's how he gets women, he, all he did was say love and light, and I thought this is the person I was supposed to meet. Now, I think all of these things are supposed to, even talking to you, it, there's a reason for all of it, it's how... You learn how to use your gifts. You learn to to finally believe in your intuition, and you just have to. Ha- you have people along the way that teach you through different ways to believe in yourself. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there was one. So. Yeah, there was more to the story, but I. I mean, it was like Hotel California one night. But um, and then even with that, after that, I don't even know how I made it home. I believe in angels watching over me. I still went back to him because I believed that he had the answers I was seeking. So the thing was, he took away the fear. I had no fear inside me anymore. Right. So it's right. just amazing how these how these things occur. So you're saying that what I went through, it, it, you think it was Kundalini? What it sounds like. Well, what I you think, think? That, that that he was yeah he was he was reaching into that. And maybe that is his job, you know, that is his job that he doesn't even know is a job. Maybe, maybe you know, within a divine context, he is here to initiate uh, a, a kundalini response in people. And he, you know, he Oh, no, he experimented by... on me, even told me. Yeah. <laughs> An experiment afterwards. It wasn't well, just that. You know, he he knew Scientology. He knew he he tried everything. He studied it for forty years, and I was his person. He did it on. The, the thing is, is that he may he may think that he knows when in fact he does not. Obviously, the person is not working within a Kundalini context, but the Kundalini context may be working through him, keeping, oh. him, blind, keeping him blind to its presence. Oh, I thought he was a healer and helping people, but I found out I thought he was help I thought he could he was an indigo child and it turned out he wasn't. And so that took me a while. Right, it was right. like a drug. It took me two weeks or more to get over this individual. Well, think about it though. Think about it. Uh, mm-hmm. look what's happened to you. Look what's happened to you. Look at how the the Kundalini has communicated through its language with you how to set things straight. You think yeah. it was just an accident? That you you wound up going to that spiritual center. I um I don't know. I met someone somewhere else, and they and they told me to meet them there, which is was a mystery well, in itself. Go. There you go. So so you've been you've been under a, a a a strong level of guidance. I feel. I feel that you had to at least in your case, you had to experience this negative man. You had to know how not to do it first so that you don't replicate his mistakes with your experience oh thank you for saying that because this is what i felt was sadness because tantra and all the things that i learned that night of course there was drugs and there was that intense too like i said hotel california because he wanted his way with me that was he wanted that and he didn't even care what happened to me afterwards but the thing was i the things i have to take the the gifts the knowledge that I received, even though, you know, he, 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 you know, however I learned it, and not remember the person that taught it to me. And and that's what I have to need to go forth and not feel badly that if I was with someone else, maybe the experience would have been just, different. Just expand it. Just, just expand rather than shrink. Expand mm-hmm. your awareness, realizing that uh, for whatever reason, the Kundalini needed to reach you through the the this this person. Who was, you know, in a shall we say, misusing, misusing uh, uh, will and misusing his, his gifts, mm-hmm. and through that misuse, 
even though he could not see it, a great gift was being given to you and is continuously now working through you. And, oh, one thing happened before I met this man, and I don't know if this has anything to do with it. I was at another center where uh, a place, and I was I saw this woman, and I walked towards her, and I saw like this gold around her, which it was American Indian, a, a halo or something. And then she put water on me, and I found out later it was like a cleansing. So she took away all the impurity apparently from my past and my ex. So I was pure, if you can believe this, before I met that person. So I was light. So I was attracting. It wasn't only him, but there were other people that were wanted, were attracted to me. Many, many of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? This, this fault. So, so, I so this all great. makes I sense that, in the, my journey. Yeah, I, think, I think I think you're having a really uh, profound journey, and I think that uh, you're beginning to learn the language mm-hmm. of Kundalini. You're beginning mm. to learn it through the experiences that it sends your way. So this 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 uh, energetic vampire guy, mm-hmm. you know, he doesn't he doesn't get away with this. Don't ever think that you get away with it. Okay, he, you know, he will go to his own certain level of of education that may help him understand what it is you went through and how you felt under the uh, under the uh, control of his of his uh, intentions and he'll learn that firsthand in a way he will become you that you were as he was interacting with you and so he Oh my god learn. it happened. He said that. He says what what are you doing to me? I I'm I, he was changing. I was becoming more stronger towards the end when I saw his mask come off when he had that tone of voice like my ex-husband and he said to me I wish I never met you and I couldn't understand it because I said I became just what you wanted me to be and it's like there we reversed so, I mean, just so what he you said you know, people don't get away with you don't get away with anything on this world you don't mm. the only thing you really get away with are, are, are you know acts of love and and beauty and acts of grace and goodness. You can get away with those, but, but to do something bad to another person, you never get away with that because you've built a karma with it, and the karma is going to have to be paid no matter what. Yes, okay. And the thing is that I was upset about is that um, I thought he was helping children and women, and yet um, and my kids could see that there's something wrong there, and my daughter thought he was a pedophile, but I could... I was already too involved in his energy field, and and I know this now, that I have to be careful. I I pick up energy. I can't read body language. So when people come towards me, I have to sell people, whoever it is, and this was for anybody. If something doesn't feel right, before they speak, be too much to you, you need to leave. Even if, there are, even if there's something about them that are, is entertaining, which that gets me, they go through my imagination, my entertaining, the more you stay with them, you get, they take your, your energy gets zapped, and then you, you become, in, you know, entwined in theirs. Well, not that so make- much with Kundalini, though. With Kundalini, there's a, there's a higher agenda at work. Oh. And so as long as, as long as you stay in touch with who you are, and you stay in touch with the language that the Kundalini is speaking to you from. And remember, as I said, it has many, many, many levels of language that sometimes it will it will speak to you all at the same time in the many, many, many different levels. You no longer have any need to fear anyone. Really? I don't. Yeah. You don't. And what about doubts? If I doubt something, I was told that's a fear if I'm unsure about something. No, so no, no. Doubt, doubt, doubt is not a fear unless you use it as a fear. I mean, you know, you have a choice on how you wish to express doubt. So, so I'm having doubt. I'm having doubt right now about the power of this psychic vampire over you. And, and you know, it's not because I fear it. Doubt is not fear. Doubt is, if anything, it's more of a caution. <gasps> it's, a, oh, if I say, if I believe what you said, it makes sense to me because I was at this place, a treatment center for my son, and they were saying there's only fear and love in this world. And I felt very uneasy about what I went through that weekend and about saying there's only fear and love. And, and so if you doubt something, you live in fear. And so I'm in a relationship with someone and I 
wonder about his intent. And so it's well, making thing, it's me like, crazy. When, hmm? when, when, you're, when you're walking in the jungle, mm-hmm. when you're walking in the jungle, you have to be extremely discerning about where you place your feet. Okay? If you're looking at a patch of ground ahead of you, you're sending your intuition into that patch of ground and you're discerning, uh, you know, if it's, a, if it's a safe place to walk or if there's a snake there that you can't see. Mm. And it doesn't mean that you're afraid of it. It just means that you're looking at the best way for you to traverse that area in the jungle. I haven't reached that point yet. Uh, my head's in the clouds. I'll be walking along unless I can even, you know, I'm, I'm, my head's one place and my body is another, and it's, like, not connected, if you understand that. And uh, until I step in something, then I'll realize, oh, this is not an illusion. It is reality, form of well, reality. Well, yeah, I mean, it, take, it takes a while to get used to this, Susan. It's not something that, that it's just going to, you're going to be instantly uh, acclimated to. Uh, you know, the other aspect is with Kundalini when you're walking in the jungle. Anywhere you walk is safe. Because the kundalini oh. won't lead you astray, it won't, it won't let you get yourself hurt, unless you need to learn the lesson through through being hurt. So this um, uncertainty that I have is what you were saying is a war. It's okay to have it, and it's not fear. If I'm if someone's talking to me and they say they're a spiritual being, they they're a psychic being, they can read my mind and they can pick up. They're saying they're picking up my fear. Are they what I'm questioning, which is a fear? I say it's a fear. Worried about something. A, a doubt. Well, I mean, first of all, you know, you can look at them. <laughs> I, I get uneasy around them. When people, when people do that, when people say that, that's a, that's a form of self-aggrandizement. And so, within your kundalini, uh, your your kundalini senses can begin to tell you. So it's like, oh, okay, why are they telling me this? And what do they expect to for for my response to be? Should I be Amazed at their at their prowess. Should I be amazed at their, you know, their spoken uh, 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 resume of the skills and abilities? I mean, you know, look at the level of ego that people are coming at. Oh my gosh, you are so right. Oh my God, you have intuition. You are amazing. That you're reading my mind because this uneasiness means that they're not true. I'm seeing not the truth for me. Maybe and why are they keep calling me and why are they keep coming around and saying things? Now some people maybe don't know the whole story of this person that I'm involved with, but why is that woman all of a sudden? What does she want from me? And she's not the only well, one who wanted something. They they this yeah, well. and. You, know? you you have you have a lot of power now. And oh my people, God, that know, psychic guy, the same thing. Power. He says, "Let go of your past." And I'm a Virgo. I don't know what sign you are. He was a Scorpion. My ex-husband was a Scorpion, so I was scared of Scorpions. And he says, "No, I'm an eagle. I'm a spiritual person. I will never harm you." <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not the first Famous time when someone word. says, "I don't want anything from you, just your friendship." You got to think, be aware of what do they want. Be smarter. You, you, you can keep your underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know that came to that point? <laughs> oh, oh, you just know hotel. Just picture Hotel California. I lived it. So it, it was just he. How could a person not? Be, I mean, I wanted to believe. I wanted to believe so strongly that this person was real. That, but all the time I was like uncertain. The whole relationship and questioning things. Well, but the, my, the, mm-hmm. the realignment for you, Susan, is that you are real and your kundalini is real. And the reason why people are wanting to contact you is because you have it. You have what they want. You have what they want. They feel that they can get it by just being in your proximity. And to some degree, you know, they're true. they're right. They can get some of that radiance. I spoke about radiance last uh, the last radio show. So uh, you have to realize that you have a level of radiance, and then it red flags you for people. Uh, people, psychic vampires, and other types of people who want to come up and they say a person needs a healing, you know, and uh, intuitively they will be uh, guided just to stand next to you or sit next to you or shake your hand or touch you in some way. Um, 
But I feel uneasy around them. Why is that? Well, what I'm going to suggest you do is is that you you refocus your energies on your own strength and your own kundalini. And you forget about communicating with psychics that say this, this, or that. If uh, if people are trying to build build themselves up to your ego, we well, you can pretty much rest assured that they're only coming from the ego, okay? from their mm. from their own ego. So the, it's the person that you happen to stand next to in the bookstore or wherever that that. You know they'll they'll give you a, a jolt of grace without even introducing themselves. Oh. The grace will just pour off of them onto you, just as my grace is pouring through my words into you right now. Mm-hmm. I don't feel okay. I don't feel. Sometimes I could talk to someone and I feel uneasiness. My head hurts or I can't move um, after I leave them. I I just feel nauseous. I don't feel that right now. So I feel the, your truth. Right. I wish you could know about this person I'm involved with. If he he seems like he's ethnical and truthful, but uh, it's I don't know. By 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 their fruits shall you know them, right? Yeah, but well, by sure their actions. Pay, pay right exactly. Pay attention to what your kundalini tells you and act on that information. You are your own best teacher. Yeah. You're right. Your okay. heart knows your mind's trying to figure out. Right. Right. And it's not to say that you you can't partake of a kundalini teacher, but you just need to, to feel them out as, as your kundalini has felt me out already and said, oh, this guy's not lying. So, I never even asked you, know, you that, how, but I guess you'll share another time, how you discovered it. Was Was it dramatic? Did you go through something so... Dramatic that that's how it came forth, or you're just born with it. Yeah. Well, my experience is a little different than other people's. Is I think I've explained it in other conversations. When you awaken the Kundalini, it travels with you into your next life expression. So when I was a child, I had the skills of an awakened Kundalini person already there, and it doesn't make your life easy. Believe me doesn't make your life easier it just makes it a lot harder because you have skills that nobody else has and your skills kind of threaten the security of other people and so they tend to uh, respond as threatened people respond and so that's what happened to me I had these skills as a child and then this corporeal body this chrism body also had to have the awakening occur and so that occurred and so in a way I've had a double a double experience with it at least when you were a child did you think life was did you know about time and space and did you or did you think life was an illusion i'm just curious you know i didn't have such deep thoughts for me you know every night i was transported to the amazon jungle and uh just you know just it was really frightening and Mm. so for me uh, you know, for the first 12, 13 years of my life, I knew that there were other realities besides the one that, that my mom and brothers and sisters, you know, interacted with me in. But there was no way for me to talk to anyone about it. And so I just, yes. I just okay, I used to go it. behind the mirror. I, I felt there was another place behind the mirror when I was growing up, and I didn't understand, I still don't understand time or space, and now we know that's um, quantum physics. And I and I always thought I was living in an illusion. And whenever, I mean, I had to be careful what I watch because I can walk into a movie. I mean, I can walk into a picture. Um, you know, like you see a, a painting, I can walk inside it and then figure out what the artist is trying to write, you know, be, or become one of those characters. So it's it's just very, I never really thought much about it, but that's, I was also a premature baby. I don't know if that means anything, three months premature. So I'm highly sensitive in my mind and body. I just wasn't aware of it because my communication skills were not developed. You know, I didn't know what we're talking about now. I, could, I mean, you, well, I would never be able to speak time. like I am now if I didn't go through those experiences or understand. This is your time, and, and there are mm-hmm. other people that are here 
sharing stuff like like Bruno, you know, he has some very interesting things and and some of the other folks that are that are joining us in this conversation. So, you know, I would really encourage you to start looking at Kundalini as the source of the force within you. Mhm. A comfort. I feel comfort now that I know that my questioning is not fear based and so cuz I was believing what they told me that I was a very fear per, fearful person and I cuz I question things now I you know and just, I'm like, I go too much I go yeah, my mind gets analytic or I just let things happen and I live in the moment it's both it goes back and forth all the time There you go I think that's <laughs> fine I don't see that as being fear based now unless you're asking questions that are of a fear level will the dog bite me um mm-hmm. will I be hit by a car as I cross the street uh if if I give, you know, if I give in to this psychic, you know, is he going to eat my energy? You know, those things can be fear-based. But, but also, also, I mean, we live in a predatory environment. And so certain levels of caution do not classify as fear. They, they classify as the body taking steps to make sure that, that the environment it's in is productive, is healthy, is, is uh, helpful to the person. You're right, because when I had no fear, I was able to do certain things, but I found out later you could have died from doing what you did. You just weren't scared, and you have no idea how you did it. So it's all state of mind. Everything's state of mind. It's all state of mind. It's confidence. Mm -hmm. It is confidence. So have confidence, Susan, Mm -hmm. in the competency of your kundalini. Trust your kundalini. No matter what, always mm-hmm. trust your kundalini. And watch who I surround myself with now, and don't let just someone touch you if you can. Well, it's, it's basically you don't surround yourself with anything. The kundalini surrounds itself around you. I mean, it comes from within, comes from the base of your spine. It fountains out the top of your head, and that radiance goes quite a distance. Mm. There's nothing that comes to you that does not have a kundalini teaching attached to it. Do you kundalini get so takes high? over the life. Do you get so high that you can't, your feet don't touch the ground and you like you're floating and you don't even you're not even aware of the people around you but you later on you found out you drawn all these people towards you? Yeah, that can occur. Mhm. Or occur. you get that so also, low by someone's voice that, can, that you can that hardly can lead, move. That can lead to levitation. Mm, that first mm. one, and then the lowness. What was the lowness one? I get so low from someone's tone of voice that I get frozen. I can't eat or drink. I just, I get. No, no, I, no, no, no. That's just that's that's you allowing them to program you. You don't allow other people to program you. You you only get programmed through your kundalini and through the teachings of others that she leads you to. No longer, oh. no longer are you susceptible to anybody's uh, psychic vocal control. Really? You can really? feel that? That's going to happen? Oh, no, that's that's already happening. I mean, that's partly, you know, the reason why you even called. Oh, wow. You 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 know that about how I about the tone of voice that I'm susceptible to. Hmm. Well, you're not wow. you're not susceptible to that anymore. Thank you. Wow, you can tell that. Okay, well, I'll I'll start believing it. It's yeah. Well, and you I know I want you wow. to go inside and believe believe your own voice. Believe the kundalini within you. Thank you. Nothing of an and outside yeah, nothing of an outside thing matters. It's now it's it's the inner the inner tranquility, the inner serenity that you will interact uh within your environment with. Oh. Kundalini brings to you. Mhm. And I say everyone I meet it, I sh- I learn something from them. It doesn't matter what I take from them. I learn something. A lesson is to be learned. And sometimes I'm attracted by what someone wears, and because of their attraction, you know, they're entertaining. But at, but I'm always uneasy. And now I understand there's a reason why I'm uneasy about that that person and to it truths to be okay. But then I say to myself, look, you you got fooled again by a salesperson or someone, but I'm not looking at it being fooled. There's something I needed to learn from that individual. It, you get yeah. stronger well, that's, each time. That's a good ideology because everything, in in many ways, it is all 
good. We mm-hmm. evolve goodness. And so if you can take that that teaching ideology and really hang on to it, even when it's a tough teaching, mm-hmm. uh, that will serve you that will serve you well. That's the only way I could think of things that happened, that that's what I got from it, even though, you know, I, I had something happen that was but drastic. But go forward. Never, mm-hmm. You are not a victim. You don't. Oh, I never thought I was a victim, ever. And I'll tell you, what happened was I became, I noticed picture. My first of all, visualization started by pictures. Then it started with quotes. Now it's in the story form. So my emotions came out forth this way because I started talking in thirds. So I don't know if that's part of the of what I experienced, but that's the form of the way I started communicating with others. Well, you have a new platform I think to explore and I'm going to suggest that you go to the uh, uh, chrism.kundalini on YouTube and watch some of those videos okay okay thank you so much for letting me speak so much oh you're very welcome you're very maybe I helped someone else that wasn't able to speak as much so there you go that's exactly right and thank you Susan thank you for your call thank you okay bye-bye Bye. So, yeah, so there you have it. I mean, Susan has, you know, she has many of the symptoms. And, and yeah, sometimes uh, these the radiance that the symptoms can cause in a person uh, will attract those people that, that are kind of of a psychic vampirish type of uh, scenario. <laughs> There's Bruno, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're you're absolutely welcome, Bruno, for that. Um, and so, and they will see it in you, and and they will come to you, and they will say, Ah, look into my eyes, yes, and follow my every whatever. And and basically, uh, they may not know that they are being used by the Kundalini. They may not know that they are being used by the Kundalini. Uh, and I am being given to turn the mic over to Santara. Hello, Christian. Um, well, at this point, I'd like to say hello to the listeners and um, just say what I usually do at this time. I would just like to say um, that Chrism gives his love and service with no expectation of a financial return. And you all know that he does not work in paid employment. And in order to be able to support people and teach people about Kundalini in every time zone around the world, and Chrism, to do this vital work, will accept donations from those who want to support him and who are in the happy financial position to be able to do so. But please know, this is very important, that there's no requirement to donate and there's no pressure at all for you to do so. But if you are able and if you want to make a donation, then here is the place you can go to do so. It's wwwascension hyphen kundalini.blogspot.com or you can just google Ascension Kundalini Blogspot and you'll probably also find the website there and you'll find the donate button on the top right hand side of the page and it's very simple to use and if anyone listening would prefer to donate to Chrism's account in the bank then please feel free to write to me and I'll give you the details that will allow you to donate in that way and my email address is kundalinimatters at gmail.com. So thank you for listening and for your understanding. And thank you to Chrism and Susan and Bruno and everybody. It's been very interesting, Chrism. Um, thank you, Amelia, for that. And uh, as always, for making that announcement. Um, you know, I had a hard time... Uh, Early on in my teachings, I I wasn't charging people, uh, and yet I was, you know, I was running out of money because I was I was paying uh, out of my own account, and and I did a few seminars, and uh, you know, if you start adding in the advertisement and all of this stuff, then it, it makes it a quite an expensive thing. Anyway, so I appreciate anybody who 
who feels drawn to to make a donation. And uh, and I appreciate you, Centaur, for making that announcement. Um, so as we continue with the language of Kundalini, uh, certain factors need to to come into your awareness. Uh, first of all, the association of language with words does not exist anymore. Language with vision or, or, or in a way you can equal one word equals an action in the in a in, in, in a frame of a film. But it's a silent film. In a in a way the Kundalini is teaching us through our actions are we understood. Through our activities are we understood not only by other people, but also by spiritual awareness and the environmental awareness, which we will call nature. So as you do what you are thinking, therefore your imprint upon the physical nature and the non-physical nature is given. So with the Kundalini, it wants you to change the way you think or control the way you think have a a methodology towards thinking in a certain way that will allow you to have an imprint upon the the uh, spiritual creation outside of you and the environmental nature outside of you in a positive way. Once again, we are not avoiding negativity, but we are we are springing forward from that density into a much less dense field of, of creation and interaction. Okay. We are rooted in the soil. When I you know, through the grounding videos and all the things about grounding that I teach, you are grounded in the earth. Your physical body is grounded in the earth. But the flower that you are, that thousand petaled lotus that you can become is very, very fine. And, and far less dense than the soil that you've come from. And so we come from density. We come from from negativity. And we are changed. We are transformed into positive expressions. That's how the spectrum is completed. That is how the equation, the human equation, is completed. It goes from extreme density into extreme a lack of density. In light, in meant, enlightenment isn't just a quality of light. It can also be a quality of density. Okay. So know this and understand this. And begin to, to understand how you, with Kundalini, begin to communicate in very specific ways with your environment. Now, you may be inside of some extremely challenging situations like Susan was, but pay attention to the language your kundalini is speaking to you in. Pay attention to the visions that it shows you. Pay attention to the dreams that it's giving you. In every dream, whether you can discern it or not, is a kundalini message waiting for you to discern. Okay? And there is no book, there is no book that's being sold that will give you kundalini uh, interpretations of dream imagery. Um, that is at the case thus far. So, if there are any other questions, I'm going to open it up. To the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and uh, I welcome anybody who has a question or would like to uh, talk a little bit about their Kundalini awakening experience. I'd like to to welcome uh, Madhava Savi and Nathaniel knows best and White Beard Beard Beard. Sorry about that. I, inter- interesting spelling on that. And Fosh, G and Bruno and and uh Celestial Rubies, I love that. Um so if anybody has a uh a question, go ahead and call in and 
If not, I'm just going to go ahead and and bring this <laughs> white beard. Okay, okay, I got it. You misspelled it. <laughs> um, I'm going to open this up once again. It's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, I told you a little bit about my early experience uh, to Susan. And and I did indeed come come into this child, the child, the Christian child, Kundalini awakened. Although I had no idea that that the energy that I was any different than anybody else. I figured I was just the same, and that for some reason people weren't experiencing these things. That's when I learned to to stop talking about it and just kind of work with it myself. Maybe you've had a similar experience. Kristen, is there a chance that Kundalini in this time also means the possibility of soulmate in this time? Is there such? Uh, soulmates, yeah. Uh, there, There is a a capacity for a soulmate to, to be joined. Uh, it typically comes after a very, very, very long uh, evolutionary process that both of the of the halves of the whole have to go through. Um, there have been some uh, documented uh, cases of a soulmate uh, occurring during World War II. Um, uh, there's a, I think, a movie being produced right now that that follows the uh, the story of uh, people who uh, were soulmates, became aware of each other uh, during during the trauma of World War II. Uh, if you look up a name, uh, 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 seven dot media, so that's seven, and then D-O-T-S, media, M-E-D-I-A, and uh, you can see how far along they are with that film. I forget what they call it. And it looks like I have Peter Klass has a question. Hello, Peter? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, Did I spell hey. your name or pronounce your name right? Uh, Peter, yeah. Peter, ah. Welcome, Peter. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, can Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, yes. Okay. Uh, I just uh, found you. I haven't uh, heard you earlier, um, but I really like and, and resonate with uh, your voice and what you're saying. I am uh, uh, practicing. Uh, I'm interested in spirituality, etc. And my question is, uh, sometimes when I meditate or or focus or uh i feel jolts in my body uh around the stomach area and it spreads out uh, upwards etc does that have anything could that have anything does it, with uh, do you have any does it spread into your lower spine yeah like sparks all, all, all over um it goes for, from yeah, yeah, that that can be an activation sequence happening. Uh, are you seeing any uh, any lights, floating lights around you when that occurs? No, I just uh, I can feel it okay. now also in the stomach area, etc. That's the center, and then it it shoots out in different uh, directions. No, upwards. no, no. That, you have to understand that your 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 stomach area and where your intestines are uh, that is. That is a huge electrical coil. Uh, that has energetic generative properties. And if you are beginning uh, to to have the Kundalini come to you, then, yeah, you will have uh, energetic phenomena like what you describe with that area. If you're not having the Kundalini come to you, uh, it, it can also mean that your chi energy is being amplified. Uh, your chi is being amplified by virtue of your meditation. What a lot of people don't understand is that meditation is energetic generative. You know, it doesn't mean that because you're sitting there and you're and you you know your, your fingers are in position and you're meditating, and yeah, it may be lowering your blood pressure and lowering your the body electric, but it's heightening the chi. It's strengthening the chi. It's strengthening 
uh, person's availability to have a kundalini experience. And so, uh, Peter, I think that uh, by virtue of the fact that you're even here, that you're even talking with me here, uh, that that you may indeed be on the cusp of a kundalini awakening event for yourself. Okay. You mentioned I'm... you mentioned earlier how my voice is going into you. Well, I give Shaktipat through the voice, and uh, and then you know out of out of the, the the people that are listening right now, you decided to call in. You see, do you see a level of of Guidance occurring with you? Yes, a lot of synchronous, uh, synchronicity. Um, yeah, things. I'm not sure. I I, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, maybe I misunderstood your question. Well, I, I see a level of guidance occurring to you that is causing us to even have oh. this conversation. Oh, yeah. The last uh, month or something, um, uh, it has uh, acted. Accelerated. Uh, I have uh, had a lot of different experiences with, um, you know, guidance and uh, hearing people that I well, resonate with. Suggest, that brings up this my is consciousness. What I'll suggest that you do, Peter. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and then okay. you look at the uh, the left hand margin, and about the fourth option down, you'll see the Kundalini Safeties, or it's just marked Safeties. And if I were you, I would begin to practice those safeties every day. And that goes for Susan as well. Susan, if you're still listening, uh, go to the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com and and copy the the safeties onto a hard copy and read them at least three times in three separate Readings. Begin to really incorporate that practice. Peter, are you, did you see that? Have, have you gone over there? I'm looking. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, copy that I've... out. Copy those safeties out. Make sure that you make the dietary adjustments with regards to caffeine and and uh, high fructose corn syrup and things of that nature. Try to eat as organic as you can. Oh, I'm a okay. big caffeine lover. I know, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I drink so much coffee. coffee. It, it really trips people up. It does, for sure. For sure, it trips them up. Have some watermelon in the morning, Peter. Watermelon in the morning, okay? Okay. It's in season now. So it should be, should be. You, you should find it. If you can't yeah. find watermelon, then have coconut milk, coconut water, coconut milk, however they want to call it. Uh, that also has uh, nutrients in it that will feed your adrenals, that keep you from from developing reasons to be afraid when there's no reason to be afraid. Okay. All right. Thanks. And yeah. uh, I would really encourage you, Peter, to go back. And listen to the other conversations we have had here yeah. on this channel. Yeah. And, and listen to those. And, and you know, once again, I have to say, it's not an accident that you that you or anybody listening to this conversation. This is not accidental. Something oh, I know that. You, it's guiding you. It's, it's guiding you here. It's guiding you to the Kundalini. It's guiding you to the divine source within you. How do you define Kundalini? I define Kundalini as the link between the physical mundane and the divine humanity. It's just it's the same thing that, that uh, changes the caterpillar into the butterfly. Kundalini is that cocoon. We just we just awaken into a a multi platform reality rather than a single phys- physical reality. Yes. Yeah, I resonate with that. I have a lot of experience with the Vedic uh, philosophy, so I, I 
Well, there you go. Some. There you. Well, welcome to the cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, my friend. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to disconnect. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for calling. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, all right, and that uh, opens up the phone. So if you want to call in, it's at 347-934-0026, 347-934-0026. And, um, okay, so you're welcome, Whitebeard and, and, uh, and Nathaniel and everybody else who's talking. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this session of uh, – conversations about your kundalini and i want to thank you all for listening i would like to thank the people listening in the archives thank you archive people and uh it's a nice opportunity to time travel to you in the in the future thank you for listening everyone thank you amelia centara for making this all happen thank you susan and peter for calling in uh and i look forward to having another conversation with you uh next week